today we are going to do um, a revision of trees and we mean by trees the computational trees and what kind of applications we are going to use those trees to perform so basically there is an issue here so just let me go to the first slide which is this one okay so what we mean by a tree a tree is a connected and directed graph with no simple circuit and basically a tree cannot have a simple circuit a tree cannot also maintain or contain multiple paths and also loops therefore any tree by the definition it should be a simple a graph it's also it's not a directed graph maybe you will be asking and you say well can we use a tree with weighted graph the answer will be definitely yes because weighted um, a graph is basically assigning a value to the edge and we use this in trees in computational trees to calculate for example the shortest path between two network nodes the other type that we introduced was emery trees and we say there is lots of equations I want you to remember that's very important for you to know that all these equations you are asked to remember them so an emery tree it has an internal vertices any tree has an internal vertices but with emery tree with degree of M like binary trinary quadrary and so on contains n which is the number of vertices equals to the degree m multiplied by i which is the number of internal vertices plus one now with full emery tree we have n vertices which normally have i where i equals to n minus one divided by two and this is how we calculate the internal vertices in emery tree and the number of leaves equals to m minus 1 multiplied by n plus 1 and here we take the absolute value divided by m which is the degree of the tree and this is we'll find the number of leaves again the internal vertices equals to n multiple equals to n um, uh, n which equals to m multiplied by i plus 1 and the number of leaves is also can be calculated by multiplying m multiply by l minus 1 divided by m minus 1 and the vertices and i which are the internal vertices could be calculated by l minus 1 divided by m minus 1 it's very important for you to remember those equations <coughs> another concept we discussed about the trees was order the tree and just to let you know Every time we speak about trees in computer science, we speak about rooted tree, which is a tree with a root. And an ordered tree, a tree with a root, have a children which each of them is ordered. And the order of those children, we do it from left to right. And the order tree can be defined recursively as we did in binary search trees. And binary search trees is one of the best example of an ordered a tree. So the concept of a tree is a very generic as a simple graph, okay? But in computer science, we always deal with ordered rooted a tree. Few terminology for you to remember. A tree is a hierarchical. We always have this kind of parent-child relationship. In this figure, for example, A is the root, and it is the parent of B and C. B as a subtree, or we call it sometimes the left subtree. The left subtree is also B here is a root for the left subtree, and B has, for example. Um, many children like D, E, and F. And we call D, E, and F are leaves. And these are the same when we talk about penitent vertices. 
they are a parent vert disease you can access that vertex by one single edge by one single root now sometimes i will be asking you okay what is for example i will give you a tree and i'll tell you what is the parent of what is the root in this tree what are the siblings for example of b what are the children of um, a what are the inheritance of b what are the descendant of b and so on So we always refer to the root, which is the only node without parent. And a leaf, which is a node which has no children. And the solitary, which is a node with all of its descendants. A general tree T is a set of one or more nodes, such that T is partitioned into disjoint subsets and a node R is the root and the sets that are general tree called subtrees of R. Now when we speak about binary rooted a tree, which are an order of the tree by the way, uh, we call a binary tree is a set of T of nodes such that T is an empty and T is partitioned into three disjoint subsets where we have a node R which is the root and we have two possible empty sets that are binary trees called the left and the right sub tree. I will give you now an example. In this example here, we have a generic tree and we have a binary tree. If you look to the figure here, figure A is basically showing a generic tree because there is no rule how you can organize the nodes in this tree. But the other one in figure B we have a binary tree where we have a subtree to the left starting by John and we have a, a rooted um, a, a subtree on the right which is Jacqueline. It is possible to have an empty subtree in binary trees. At least you have for each node two children according to the rule of Emery trees. When we speak about a full Emery trees, we have to remember a few equations and this theorem is very important n which is the number of vertices can be calculated using this equation where i equal n minus 1 divided by m internal vertices this is the the equation that gives you an internal vertices of a full emery tree i wish you can remember and distinguish between the difference between this equation and the previous one. And I equals to M minus one multiplied by N plus one divided by M leaves. The internal vertices also can be calculated to find out the number of leaves. And also the leaves has N equals to M multiplied by L minus one divided by M minus one. And then I equals to 1 L minus 1 divided by M minus 1 internal vertices. Those equations, I think you should remember them in uh, before the exam. <coughs> now, how we employ binary search trees or binary or emery rooted um, ordered tree in computer science? A great example of this, when the compiler like Python or Java needs to evaluate a mathematical expression. Every time we say the mathematical statement A minus B, this taken by the compiler as a tree. <coughs> it will take the root as the operator, which is the minus, and the leaves or the subtrees, if you want to say, because sometimes you can include more, sub, um, more um, uh, calculation in the same statement. So the subtrees will be the operands. So if we want to represent A minus B, we can take the minus as the root, and the operands will be A and B. Using a tree traversal technique that we will learn later on, the compiler managed to evaluate this mathematical expression and find the result and find the value. And this is how any compiler do mathematical and logical operator um, uh, uh, evaluation. 
Another example, if you have, let's say, a statement, which is A minus B divided by C. Now, you will notice here that the minus is the root. And this is, by the way, taken by in-order traversal, as we, I'll give you an example <coughs> later on. And the minus will be the root. Now, the subtree to the left will be A, which is the first operand in this mathematical statement. The right subtree will be another representation of the mathematical notation B divided by C. In this case, the division operator will be taken as a root for this subtree, and the operands will be B and C. Take another example where we have A minus B in a parentheses multiplied by C. You will see now, or you will know from any programming language, because there we have like operator precedence. Everything in the parentheses, we give it high priority. We do it first, right? Now, considering that this example is done using in order traversal, we start by taking the star as the root because it is the in order traversal. And everything inside the parentheses is basically a left subtree, which means it's lower in the value below the star. And that's why it becomes the one in the left, which means the compiler has to do it first, <coughs> by the way. In this example, the compiler have to do this part first, and we take the minus as the root of this subtree, we take the operands A and B, and then we do the C in the right subtree where we have the star. So, as a summary, a binary search tree is a binary tree with a degree M equal to 2 which is a sorted, rooted, ordered a tree. For each node, you can calculate, for example, the n when, when you want to order the tree, when you want to construct it. For each node, n, the n values, which are greater or equal to the value of this node, should go to the left. And if they are less than, all the values should go to the right sub a tree. Sometimes the application allow duplicates, and this is not important for me in this Computing Fundamental 2 course, because this is like a generic information for you guys. If we have a duplicate value, and we want to construct a binary search tree, the rule is the duplication should always go to the left. When we are trying to represent a database using a binary search tree, we normally take each key as a unique identifier, and this unique key will be placed on the root. And based on the root value, we'll start to having more values, and we'll say, okay, do we place this one to the left or to the right? We compare the new value with the root value, and we say, does, for example, three less than two or greater than two? If this three is less than two, we place it where? To the left. If it's greater, we go to the right and so on. I will give you now an example of a binary search a tree. So this is an example of binary search a tree of names. We have Jane as the root. Now Bob, as a name, okay, is less than Jane, the character B in the alphabetical order. B is less than Jane or greater than Jane. It's less than Jane, so it should go to the left. Now, Tom, T is greater than G, so it should be on the right. Now, take, for example, Alan. A is less than J and less than B, so it should go to the left of Bob. But Eileen, E, the character E, is basically less than J, but it is greater than B. Now with Nancy, N, N is greater than J, and is less than T, so it should go to the left of the subtree of Tom. And Wendy, W, is greater than J, and greater than T, so it should be basically on the right subtree of Tom. A generic advice in the exam, 
write the alphabetical order and construct the, the tree. The first value in the list always is the root. In the exam, write the alphabetical order so you don't forget them and you don't mix them because you will do that. And then take the first value in the list. If I give you a list of names, let's say starting by uh, Stephen, Mark, Edward, um, so on. Mark, okay? The first name in the list will be always the root, regardless it is starting with S, which is a very greater value, or with a small value and as well. And then comparing those values based on the ascending um, um, alphabetical order, it plays the value to the left or to the right of the binary tree. Now this leads us to another important concept in a tree, which is basically the height of the tree, which is basically the number of edges on the longest path from the root to a leaf. <coughs> Consider, for example, figure A. Because this is a binary tree, this means I have the same number of edges in every subtree, which means I can sp straight away say, that the height of this tree equals to two. But if you take, for example, figure B, if you say, well, the height of this tree based on the edge AC is one, it is wrong. You have to take the longest path in the tree first in order to identify the height of the tree, which in this case, one, two, three, and four. Now for figure C, it is the same, I will calculate the number of edges, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, another example, or another term used sometimes, which is the full, uh, perfect full binary tree, what we mean by that? In this case, all nodes are at a level less than H, have two children, where H is basically the height. Each node has a left, right subtree of the same height. Now, don't mix between perfect full binary tree and perfect binary tree. Let's say if the height h is greater than zero, then the number of leaves, now this is how you can calculate the number of leaves. I think one of the most important concepts that you need to work on is how you calculate the number of vertices, the, the height and the internal vertices in those different types of trees whether it is perfect binary, is it balanced binary, it is full, uh, perfect full, and so on. And the number of nodes is two to the power uh, h plus one minus one. If the number of nodes is greater than zero, then the total number of vertices in the tree equal to this equation, two to the power uh, h plus one, uh, minus one. And the height, you can calculate the height by using the log of n plus one, minus one, and here we are talking about base two of log because this is binary tree. And then you calculate the number of leaves where we have n plus one divided by two, which equals to two to the po uh, power h. And this is basically, this equation leads us to this equation and vice versa. The third type of binary tree is called complete binary tree. And this is where things really get confusing. Because here we are talking about a binary fall down to level H minus one, but it is not balanced. And we call it complete. While the previous one, we call it um, a perfect binary tree, and it sound more balanced and it sound more complete. Where we have, for example, level H minus one with level H filled in from left <coughs> to right because it's an ordered rooted tree. You always start from left to right. In this case, we are, when we consider complete binary tree, all leaves node are at some depth of n or n minus one. It should be one of them, whether it's an n, and normally this n will be on the left subtree and n minus one in the right subtree. And all leaves at depth n are towards the left. That's the most distinguished thing about a tree. Now with balanced tree, here the height of every node 
right subtree differs from the height of the nodes in the left subtree by no more than one. So you are allowed to have one level difference between them. So it's always pinned, you can say, twisted to the left. A complete binary tree by default is balanced. Another important concept that I want you to be able to identify and use it in a practical examples are the applications of trees. We discuss binary search trees and we will show you how you can use them to insert a new node or to search for a node or to construct a new binary search tree from a set of words or a list of uh, names. And then we will use, uh, we have discussed this geometry where we can use those three structure in order to come up with the best decision about any problem. And there was many examples how we can, for example, use the decision tree to decide the optimization of a sorting algorithm, where each node now represents the time complexity of a sorting algorithm, and we can use this decision tree to say, okay, it looks like um, sequential sort, is worse than bubble sort and so on. Then we have discussed the prefix code and Hoffman coding, a technique that we use at tree to solve real world problems. Now let me focus in this revision on binary search tree. So in this example, if I want to search, let's say about a value on a tree, the rule is, the generic rule is, if it's less, go left, if it's greater, go right, if it's equal, search head. Let me now search for the value h in this tree. The first thing I will do, I will go to the rule. Does h less than the value of s? So you compare and you go to the left. Now you compare h with e and you go to the right. You compare h with r and H is basically is less than R, so you go to the uh, left of R. And now you find H equals to H, and this is basically you hit the search. You find the value that you are looking for. Now let me search for um, another value like G. G compare it to S. Go left, compare it to E. Go right, compare it to R and go left to compare it with H, and then go left of H, because G is less than H, and there is no node there, which means the value is not exist on the binary search tree. Now, how we could insert that value on the tree? We do the same mechanism. We compare the value of G with H to, with the root to identify where we need to go, left or right. G is basically greater than E, so we go to the right, is less than R, we go to the left, is basically less than H, and we insert a new node here on the left subtree of H. And this is how my, the tree looked like after this insertion happened. <coughs> Another common example that was discussed in the slides is how you can construct a binary search tree from a list of words. And we start by the first word in the list. And by this tree, we will start by the word mathematics. <coughs> After we put mathematics, we take the second value, which is physics. P is greater than M, so we go to the right. Then we take geography. G is less than M, so we go to the left. Then we take zoology and Z is greater than M, is greater than P, so we go to the right of physics, and we insert this new concept. Now, after that, we have metrology, and M is greater than mathematics, because this is MA, and here we have ME. Then we have physics. Now, physics, definitely, the word ME in the alphabetical order is less than physics, so we go to the left of physics, and we insert this word. Then we take uh, geology, and G-E-O-L is basically less than mathematics, and it is 
greater than geography because geo and we have geo l so this should be inserted to the right of geography and then metrology and then we insert it in the left of physics and chemistry which will be inserted to the left of geography and metrology again and physiology and the final the final version of this tree is shown in this figure where we have put or managed to put all these values in the right order. A generic algorithm that I want you to review and to understand very well of how you can basically locating an item or adding an item in a binary search tree is showing in this figure. In the same, we could insert a value, and this you can try it later on, on the previous binary search tree. You search where you should locate this item on the tree based on the comparison between the root. You go left or right until you find the best location um, to be in the right order. You could basically represent binary or a complete binary tree using a table where you can list all the nodes and you specify, for example, the location of each node based on those equations. Left child index is 2 to the power i and right child index is 2 to the power i plus 1. And minus 1 indicates a null node. Remember, the most important operation for me are searching for a value, inserting a new value, and constructing a binary search tree from a list. The second important issue of trees application was tree traversal. And tree traversal is a concept I want you to study very well and practice as much example as you can. Tree traversal refers to the process of visiting each node in a structured way. And here we need to visit each node exactly once in a very systematic way. And there is a three methods of traversing a tree. The first one called pre-ordered. By pre-ordered we mean we visit the root first. <coughs> then we go left and then, which is the left sub tree, and then we go right sub tree. The other method is called in-ordered, and we have discussed the in-ordered in evaluating mathematical expression just in a few slides ago, where we have now the roots in the middle of the traversing. So you visit the root in the middle of the process. But first, you go to the left sub-tree of the root, you visit it. And then once you complete that sub-tree, you go back to the root, and then you go back to the right, and so on. With post order here, we don't do the root first or in the middle. The root comes first, last one to visit in the traverse process. We go to the subtree first, then the right one, and then to the root. Let me now give you an example. Consider the tree that we just discussed previously about nodes, about uh, a tree of names, and let me do the pre-order. With the pre-order, I have to visit the root first. So I go and I list Jane. Now from Jane, I have to go now to the left sub-tree. And look how the way I say, it's Jane, left, right. You have to do left first. Now go to the left of Jane. Again, you are going to a root, which is Bob. So you take Bob first, because it is a um, pre-order. Then you go to the left of Bob, which is Alan, and then you go back to the right of Bob, which is Eileen. Now, by this stage, I finish visiting all the nodes in the left sub-tree. I have to go back to the right sub-tree. I do the process again. So, the process again will be visiting the root first, go to the left of the root, finish it, and come back and go to the right of the root. Okay? So this is the pre-order of this tree. This is a very important example. 
Now when we take, for example, in order, in order means I finish the left subtree first, then I came back to the root, I finish the right tree. By this, we take left, then the root chain, then the right of that subtree. Now, once you go to the left, you have to go to Bob, okay? And you finish Alan first, then you go to Bob, then you go to Elin, because this is the right. Now you finish the subtree. You go, you put J, because it's in order. Once you finish the root, you go to the subtree. And every time you go to a subtree, deal with it as a, a, a different tree. Deal with it as a new one. So you always implement the traversing um, strategy that you are using in that subtree as a new um, stop. Now, when, when you take the right subtree, Okay, you take for example Tom, but you don't list Tom yet. You have to go to the left of Tom, which is Nancy, then you list Tom, and then you list Wendy. You finish the right, you go back, and you finish the traversal of this tree. The third one, which is post order, and I think post order is the easiest one. Why? Because you finish everything, and then you specify the root. You go to the left of the root, and you take that sub tree. Then you go to that left, and you specify Ellen. You specify the right of the root, which is Elin, and then you specify the root, Bob. Then you go back, you go to the right. You specify, again, left, right, root. The left of Tom, which is Nancy. Then you go back to Tom, but you don't list it. You list Nancy, uh, Wendy, because it is the right, and then you list the tom as a root. Then you go back and you list j. And this is what we mean by post order. How you can employ tree traversal in real application in computer science? Again, it's a mathematical expression evaluation. Consider, for example, the value of this expression that you it's given to you in a prefix expression. So we take, to evaluate this expression, we have to go right to left, performing operation using the operand on the right, and uh, I will show you now the figure, where the value of the expression is a three. The postfix form of an expression by traversing its binary tree in post or We call this the postfix form. And sometimes they refer to those postfix form in computer languages as the Polish reverse Polish notation. Thank you. So the exam is basically having you to answer three questions out of four. The first step I want you to do in the exam is to read all these questions and mark the one that you are going to answer. Start with the one that you find really simple and straight away for you to figure out the answer. Don't start with the most difficult question in order to, uh, to, consume, to utilize your time. I don't think this is a good strategy. Now, once you decide, for example, to answer question one, two, and three, start with the most simple one, like definition we should always be able to describe a definition. Even if you forget the actual formal definition which is required to answer these questions, try to describe it in your own words and put the formal definition inside the description of the definition. So briefly explain each of the following. This is um, a generic question that you will find normally in any paper. So you have to be familiar with all the terms and concepts we use in this course. Like what is directed and directed graphs, complete graph isomorphism, and so on. Maybe it will help if I just show you my sample answer key. This is how I view this question when I want to correct. For example, for graph isomorphism, I'm looking for a definition similar to this. The symbol graph G, G1, of vertices V1 and E1, and G2, V2, and E2 are isomorphic if there is a one-to-one -one and onto function F from V1 to V2, with the property that A and B are adjacent in G1, if and only if F of A, which is the mapping, 
and f of b in graph j2 are basically adjacent for all a and b in v1 such function f is called an isomorphism this is what i'm looking for if you tell me in the exam isomorphism is two graph similar this is not going to be the correct answer now the second question explain how to model different aspects of computer network or airline routes using simple graph multigraph pseudograph directed and um, directed multigraph again i will use diagram for each one of them with the actual formal definition of each of them like what is simple graph what is directed and directed and so on let's say what about question 1c where we have to describe the following families of graph and give an example for each one of them here where you always need to define each one and draw a figure draw a diagram and that's why I said, for the exam, I advise you to have different colors. And I really do believe that you need that for graph coloring, for drawing different types of graphs, and to make labelings and marks. So this is how I look to it. This is how I want you to answer each one of them. You give me an example about K1, K2, Q1, Q2, <coughs> Q7, and so on. Determine whether the given pair of graphs showing in figure 1 and 2 are isomorphic. Now this answer you can find it's very short and small because this is an answer key for myself. For you, I want you to do the most important thing we did in when we check isomorphism. First, we do the check. And we check the number of vertices in both of them. Number of edges. And then we check if there is a difference in the structure between them. Now, to check the difference in the structure, we have to check, for example, the degree of each vertex and the mapped the vertex to this vertex in the second graph, and we see that we maintain adjacency and non-adjacency in both of them. You don't have to do a matrix then for them? And you have to do also the adjacency matrix for them. Now, prove or disprove that there are always two vertices of the same degree in a finite multigraph having at least two vertices. This is remind you with what? With one of the theorem that we have considered. So, whether you start by proving this based on the handshaking theorem, or you can use ORAS or DIRAC theorem to prove that. If none of them work, just to give me um, a direct or indirect to prove, as we learned in Computing Fundamental 1, how you can do that. You give an example, okay, and you calculate the degree, and you put the answer as an equation that it is possible or it's not possible to prove or disprove that. This remind and explain whether the graphs with the, uh, with the incidence matrices shown in figure 3, 4, and 5 are, are isomorphic. Now, here you are giving the incidence matrix, and all you need to do is to check whether they are isomorphic or not. So normally, you just check the degree of vertices, the number of edges, and similarity in structure. And based on that, you say, okay, graph 1 and graph 2 are isomorphic or not. When we say, in graph theory, what is meant by graph coloring? Now, I want you to describe it in your own words, what we mean by graph coloring. Then you specify the, uh, the theorem, the four color theorem, and you prove it. And if you look to the proof of the four color theorem, I start by giving an example and just doing some adjustment to this example to prove or disprove that. And I will have like an assumption that maybe I need four colors. And it, it's happen to be like three colors are sufficient or two and so on and this is what we mean by a chromatic number in the process i will be defined the chromatic number that is going to be playing an important role to prove or disprove this equation proof or whether the given graph showing in figure seven and six are basically a planner if so draw it so that no edge is crossing and this is about planner graph where you need to practice and this is one of the things you need also to practice take different example of graphs in, in about um, and try to draw them in different way on the plan uh, to achieve a planner a graph 
prove and discuss the handshake in theorem and give example to support your proof here again I will start by specifying what we mean by the handshake in theorem I will specify by my assumption so I can approve it or disapprove it and I will give example now when you want to solve the travel uh, the traveling sales person problem this is how I would do it I will list all the circuits and the weight and the total of them and I will select the lowest value of them if you answer straight away will be 20 or 21 this is the shortest path and all of the calculation happened somewhere this is not a full complete answer I want a list I want to you to show me that you understand the concept and you will be able to list all the circuits show that the Peterson graph showing in the figure does not have a Hamilton circuit but that subgraph obtained by deleting a vertex V and all edges incident with V does have a Hamilton circuit the the first step I will do I will delete that vertex and I will draw the graph and I will start to prove or disprove there is a Hamilton circuit or not so you can conclude from all of that the first step is whether you specify the theorem or a checklist or you draw that graph in order to start <coughs> working on it build a binary search tree for the words banana peach apple pear coconut mango and papaya uh, using alphabetical order this is basically you start with banana and you compare apple is less than b so it go to the left p is greater than b so it go to the right and so on and this is basically what i would normally ask in the final exam and good luck for all of you